Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. feelings and all the, the thoughts from our day, asking God, our merciful Father, to bless us for being here tonight as we gather in his name to learn more, to share his wisdom, to share love and words of kindness. Let's ask for his protection for the protection of the good spirits. May, may our mentors be by our side, preparing the environment of our houses, helping us to connect and vibrate together so we can all learn and enjoy the talk from tonight. So be it. Thank you so much, Angiata, for the for the beautiful prayer, and thank you, Raphael, for all of your help with the, the broadcasting and the host duties. So appreciate it, and and welcome everyone to our Tuesday night public lecture. My name is Cara Valentino, and I'm a member of the Light of the Soul Christian Spiritist Center here in Apex, North Carolina. I know we have folks that are have joined us tonight from from many different states, and I know we have some of our friends here from Brazil. Um, some folks from Charlotte. So, um, so welcome everyone. It's a beautiful thing when technology allows us to come together in a space like this with the collective intention of, of, of elevating our thoughts, of, of the opportunity to come together to, to learn more and to study, uh, to study the, the, the lofty principles of the Spiritist Doctrine. And so, so tonight we have a, a new topic, uh, Thought and Life. This is the book written by uh, the Spirit Emmanuel, psychograph through Chico Xavier. And it's a, a very small book um, with um, the chapters are like one or two pages. It's a very, very small book. But as often is the case with Elevated Spirits, the, it may not be a lot of content in terms of volume, but with the lessons and the, the, the wisdom and the, the, the elevation is, is very high. And so... I will do my best to share what I was able to take from my preparation time over this last week. And I hope that uh, you all uh, enjoy and are able to um, receive some message that is, uh, will be helpful for us as we all set our intention collectively to transform together on this journey. And so it's always good, you know, when reading a book, many times we don't read the introduction or the preface to a book, but the introduction often tells us, especially in books by Emmanuel, he will say, here's why I wrote this book. And here's the objective for this book. And when you read this book, this is what I want you to do, right? So, um, so he says, you know, when we say, what is the purpose of this book? He says that there's three things that are the intention of this book. One is that friends on the spiritual plane had asked if there could be a, a book adopted for us here on earth that would speak to problems of a spiritual nature, which obviously we need because that's what we're here to solve for, right, is the spiritual problems we have that have us so focused on the, the physical plane, that it would be something light and brief. So brief, yes, I think what is light to the spirits is still a lot for us, you know, here, here in the, the physical realm. And that it would be a synopsis of lofty principles to guide us here on our journey on earth. So this is was was what the friends from the spiritual plane asked for this book to be. So Emmanuel remembers that there is a, a series of special instructions that were given to the schools of regeneration on the spiritual plane for those who are preparing for a new birth during their time between the grave and the cradle. So notice the switching of those terms, because here in the physical plane, we talk about between the cradle and the grave, right, between the birth of the physical body and the death of the physical body. But in the spiritual realm, which is the, the true existence, the terms are reversed. It's about life between the grave and the cradle, right? So 
during that time in the spiritual world, there's a preparation that we all go through. And actually, this book, the instructions in this book are actually used in the spiritual realm to prepare spirits to return to Earth. So this is very interesting that these are the set of instructions that Emmanuel chose to fulfill the, the mentor's instructions to provide something for us. And so even in the spiritual realm, that set of instructions was called Thought in Life, and that title was retained. But as it says in bold at the bottom, and this is what I'd like us to think about as we are taking this journey together on this subject, is that the ultimate goal of this book is that through the millennia, we shall identify ourselves with infinite wisdom and infinite love that constitutes the thought and life of our father. And so we are in this one life. So we're not gonna have millennia in this night, right? We're not gonna have millennia in this physical existence, this particular body, this particular incarnation. So if we think about how can we apply this just in this moment, right? It's how right now could we identify ourselves with infinite wisdom and infinite love? Because infinite wisdom and infinite love are the thoughts and the life of, of, of our father. So I have an invitation for you. I know many times, you know, we say, oh, would you like to ask any questions or ask comments? And, and many times, you know, we're here on this techno technology platform, stay silent. But when we're all in a room together, often, you know, we, we speak more. So in deference to the particular wishes of each one of you um, that are on this call, whether you speak up or use the chat, I do have a favor to ask, and I'm fine if it's the chat, is if you could just take a minute, and even now is fine, to just put into the chat one or two thoughts. If we were to think about this whole night tonight, how to keep our thoughts elevated, what are some elevated thoughts? Is it thinking about love? Is it thinking about peace? Is it thinking about charity? Is it, you know, what do you think about when you're elevating your thoughts? I would love for you to put that in the chat. You don't have to do it this second, but I would love to see throughout this night, I'll be checking the chat to see, you know, what are some ideas of elevated thoughts? Because here's how we can help each other. I am not the keeper of elevated thoughts. I'm a student right here with you. So if collectively together, we think about, think about, what are some types of elevated thoughts, then we can begin to learn from each other. And so that is my hope for tonight. So I'll be checking the chat periodically to see what are some examples of, of elevated thoughts. And so it looks like we have, I uh, love this, um, understanding. I love this. Thinking about charity, music. Yes, I love this. Um, so please keep adding them. And what I'm going to do is as we make our way through the lecture, I'm going to keep coming back to this because we'll be looking for examples of keeping our thoughts elevated because we can get love and serenity. I love that. So that we can begin to practice returning our thoughts to that of elevation, kindness. Yes, breathing and praying. I All of this, all of this. So when we think about this book now, it's a very short chapter. It literally is like a page and a half and it's called The Mirror of Life. And so the, an excerpt from this chapter says, the mind is, stands as a mirror of life in all places. In its ascension from the earth plane towards God, it may be compared to a rough diamond. It is the mind. And that this rough diamond is excavated from the dark interior of the earth and under the guidance of the stonecutter, it advances towards the magnificence of light, right? So this is the mind. So if we think about the mind being a mirror of life in all places, if we were thinking the thoughts that are in this chat, breathing and praying, thinking about family and great time together with those loved ones, thinking about the feeling of love, gratitude, I love that, right? If we're thinking about gratitude, if we're thinking about Jesus, let's keep that simple right? Thinking about Jesus, thinking about love. When we are thinking about these things, we are now creating the energy of that in our environment because it is in our thoughts that we create the life that we live, right? So we must look within and think, what are our predominant thoughts? What do, what is a standard persistent thought that we have in life, right? Normally we think about paying bills, right? Or being fit, right? Or being healthy, or finding and keeping, um, you know, a husband or a wife or, or a mate, or getting rich or getting a job, right? These are all temporary objectives, unlike like what Tiago just put in here at the chat, being patient, 
right? All of the things I just mentioned are transitory thoughts that we, I mean, we have to think about them because it's important to pay our bills and it's important to keep our physical body fit. And it's important to, to make enough money to, um, to be able to, you know, to take care of, of feeding our children and, and feeding our bodies. But if we're doing all that and we're not being patient, only the body is being taken care of and not the spirit. If we are doing all of that and we're not thinking about, um, like Flavia says, thinking about Jesus and thinking about love, only the body is being taken care of and not the spirit. And then the mirror of our life will then be only physical and not spiritual. If we're only thinking about these temporary things and we're not thinking about gratitude, like what Anna Christina said, then we're not going to have the opportunity to transform our life in its ascension from the earth plane towards God. We will remain on the earth plane. We won't go backwards because the law of evolution states that we never go back, but we will remain still or ascend very slowly if we're only studying these physical things instead of these, these beautiful things. Kindness, again, Fabiana, I, I love that um, because if we can be uh, focused on all of these physical things and be very unkind and that will keep us stuck. So please keep adding, you know, the, the, these elevated thoughts. I don't, it does not matter how many we add, the more, the better, because just this simple act of looking in our mind, examining our minds for elevated thoughts is in and of itself a very powerful exercise. Building peace in the world. Yes. More of that, please. Oh, and courage. Yes. I love that. I love that because we have to really be brave to really look at our thoughts. Um, you know, in, um, in, in, in Nasolar, um, I know uh, some of you um, are going to be studying that starting this upcoming week. And then some of you studied that last semester. Um, Lysias uh, talked about collective work. And he also mentioned the actual words, thoughts being the mirror of life. And what he said was like, the, like when a number of souls gather together, like in the accomplishment of an activity, that their thoughts mingle, forming centers of living power. And that each one receives like a share, like a portion of the joy or suffering from the overall vibration. And think about what we're doing right now, just the, just the taking the time to put positive thoughts, finding godness, service. We are now a collection of souls that are working together for the accomplishment of an activity of searching for elevated thoughts. Right now, our thoughts are mingling, forming a center of living power. But if we were all joined together complaining about something, the living power that we would be creating would be quite different. It would be a different energy. And so the, the th our thoughts are a mirror of life. And so Another, um, for those of you that are in the Light of the Soul WhatsApp group, there's some wonderful posts in there. And then if you're not in that WhatsApp group, if you could send Raphael or myself or Flavia or put it in the chat that you'd like to join that group because wonderful messages are put in there. And, and Flavia had put a message in there recently and it, um, it was called Profound Thought. And it said, you know, it is important for each one of us to recognize what we need for our own peace of mind. And that if each individual would maintain a worthy attitude of comprehension of his or her own personal obligations, that the ghosts of, of disquiet would remain at bay. And if everyone were mindful or thinking about their own particular duties, two thirds of the world's social problems would be resolved naturally. Now this is a message from Emmanuel that Flavia posted. But this is now, I'm gonna repeat that first sentence. It is important for each one of us to recognize what we need for our own peace of mind. So if we were to look back through that chat now, I can tell you, if we're thinking about service, how to be of service, that's going to bring us a lot more peace of mind than thinking about being selfish. If we're thinking about, like Bill said, finding godness, we're going to have a lot more peace of mind than looking for hellishness, right? If we're, like Marcia said, you know, if we're thinking about courage, right? Bringing in ourselves the courage to do this work. That's going to bring us a lot more peace than refusing to do our duty. And of course, if we're thinking about building peace on earth, that of course is going to bring us peace of mind. But begin to also think as we're, you know, harmonizing together around the subject matter, you know, what kind of thoughts do you think that make you feel good, that make you feel as though you are ascending from the earth plane towards God? Because under the guidance of the stonecutter, and the stonecutter in this context is Jesus, right? It's the gospel. 
right? We advance towards the magnificence of light and gather together as we are tonight with the intention of studying the teachings of the gospel and the teachings of the good spirits, we have this opportunity to ascend together. So let's think about what that means for us. And so we think about the mind, right? So this is, these excerpts on these slides are just excerpts from the chapter. So it says, you know, as we study the mind from the spiritual perspective, limited as we are, because we are limited between the animal or the lower nature and the angelic states or the upper realms, that we are impelled to interpret the mind as being like a field of our awakening consciousness where the evolutionary phase of the knowledge allows us to function. So if we think about this mind being a field of awakening, you know, what, what, are, what, are the, what are the habitual thoughts? What are the first thoughts? If we think about awakened spirits who are in this field of awakening, further along than us. You know, I, um, Vanessa um, from Kardec, Kardec Radio also did a talk on this very same chapter. And, and I listened to that as part of my, my preparation. And she said something really interesting that the first thought of most elevate, of elevated spirits is always that they want to help. That that's always the first thought, like the predominant thought atmosphere, the thought pictures, the thought forms, the habitual mental reflexes are around wanting to help. That's the, always the first thought. And if we think about what are our habitual thoughts, you know, I was part of a leadership program where I work and part of the work they had us doing around emotional intelligence and self-awareness was to actually examine in situations that bothered us at work, what was our habitual thought around that situation? And that by observing our habitual thoughts, we would give ourselves an opportunity to change or transform the habitual thought we had about a recurring situation. And whatever those recurring thoughts are, obviously show our level of elevation and can also help us grow, right? So this is this idea of observing what are, what are, what are our habitual thoughts. And so thinking about that, we have some more good thoughts to add here, sending seeds of hope and patience and fraternity. If we had that as our habitual thoughts, family, friends, God, sense of belonging, these are things that bring us peace, right? When we're suffering or when we are in a recurring situation that's difficult, when we are in this field of our awakening consciousness, if we are thinking about the things that we have in this chat, being ready to serve, this can bring us a lot of peace. This will help us in this field of awakening consciousness, allowing us to move along that evolutionary phase, not just allowing us to function, but as on the previous slide, as this rough diamond begins to be more polished, bringing us more brilliance. And interestingly, in the, the domain of mediumship, I remembered reading a quote that I had read long before I was actually studying it in the Spiritist Center. And I actually attributed the quote somewhere else. And then when I was reading it again yesterday, I said, like, oh, wait a minute, that was one of Andre Louise's mentors in the domains of, of, um, of mediumship. But one of the mentors was talking about habitual thoughts. And he said, those who delay indefinitely in measuring mud are in danger of drowning in it. Let's think about that for a minute. And what does that mean, right? That means constantly thinking thoughts that are looking for dirt and making sure we measure how, what is the consistency of that dirt and how much water is in that dirt and how dusty is that dirt and how much dirt does it cover and what would happen if there weren't so much dirt? While we're doing that, where are the thoughts of being ready to serve? Where are the thoughts of the seeds of patience and fraternity? Where are the thoughts of faith and service and finding godness, courage? Where are the thoughts of observing nature around us to remember how God is present everywhere? I love that, Julie. I'm just seeing that now, right? Where are the thoughts of Jesus and gratitude and thinking about family? Where are the thoughts of kindness and love and serenity? We don't have that. We're thinking about mud. We just can't have it. And so that same mentor in domains of mediumship also said to Andre Louise, let us wash our thoughts, purifying them with the incessant practice of good. I'm going to say that again. How do we, we want them to watch your thoughts, but purifying them is something that we do. We first as we observe, then we actually do something about what we've seen. So the doing something is purifying those thoughts with the incessant practice of good. Incessant means like no stopping. Like you incessant, you just keep doing good and you don't stop, right? In order to dislodge ourselves from the shackles that chain us to the dark processes of the inferior life. 
And it is from the living forge of thought that the wings of angels and the chains of the condemned are surfaced. So it is from our thoughts. So the more good thoughts that we can come up with instead of measuring mud, oh goodness, I love this. Gold light, yes, is thrown in the air. Be ready to stir. I love this. I love, love, love this. Let's, uh, yes. I have something to say to Please. add. Please. Um, so just a, a little example of what you were talking about, um, of like, measuring and how hard it is and like Indeed. yesterday I felt it was a little victory of myself you know mine of mine um just because I was interacting with my sister she is very different you know her her temperament her you know um, characteristics are very different than than mine she's a very close person and and she said something that in the first moment at first I thought uh, maybe she doesn't want my presence. Maybe she doesn't, she's saying this because she doesn't want me around her. And, and then I am like, because so this is my default, right? So I have this tendency of like interpreting things and feeling hurt. I think we all also have that. And then at some point I am like, but wait a minute, maybe she didn't mean that it's just like a, her, her way of communicating is different than the way that I communicate and mm -hmm. and maybe you know this is she has her own way of expressing love it is different than the way that I do but it's all good right mm -hmm. and then at, at a couple minutes after a couple minutes I am like I am kind of proud of myself because you know it, it takes you some observation to be able to understand your patterns and I was able to understand that this is kind of a pattern of mine and I am like yeah hopefully I will keep improving <laughs> but it is very hard it is like you do right once and then maybe next week you are going to go back to the pattern so it's just like a constant how, how does Jesus says it's like um we have to um, pray and uh, uh, orai anyway, Watch so and pray. Watch and pray. Yeah, yeah. So yes. it's kind of like that. I love that you said that. And I think what's good for all of us that we can take from this, if, if we're willing to, is that you made an observation, you changed a behavior, you noticed that the changed behavior made you feel good. So you were able to connect a thought and action and a feeling. If we are able to do that consistently, notice how what we think controls what we do and how what we do controls what we feel. It doesn't always go in that exact order, but if we can connect those three and notice the, the, the outcomes and then work to get that same outcome, this is, this, is, this is the path. This is the path. And sending light to all bad thoughts. Yes. Um, please keep putting your good thoughts into the chat. Please, 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 please. Rafael, were you going to say something? It looked like you had went off mute at the same no, time. Sorry about that. No worries. Yes, thank you, Angiata. Thank you. I love that you said that. Um, so, so if now, so if we think about this, right? There's the um, there's this idea of of always wanting to um, uh, measure mud and being careful to have higher thoughts. There's oftentimes the way that we react to each other. These habitual thoughts of reacting and having a judgment about how someone is showing up, right? Instead of doing, you know, like what we see in the chat, right? Being ready to serve, you know, throw gold light, put light on the thoughts, send light to all bad thoughts. There's um, another, there's a story that, um, that, that um, is, uh, I, I think this came from, from Flavia. Um, it was a story about um, these little boys in, in, um, in India, right? That, so there's these two, what happened was there was like this forest fire, right? And these, um, these two kids were playing in the forest um, one was blind and the other one only had one leg. And so when this fire breaks out, they're desperate, right? And they're screaming for help. And because of hearing each other scream, you know, they find each other. But they had the worst thoughts, right? Because the boy that has the legs to escape, he cannot see. And the one who has has the, you know, the one who has legs cannot see, the one who, who can see doesn't have legs, right? So how are they going to do this? Um, he's also the one who also has the eyes and he's blinded by the smoke. But somehow they came together to the idea that the one-legged boy would climb up on the shoulders of the blind boy because the blind boy has legs but can't see, right? And so together, 
from above, the boy on the top, you know, he can see while the blind boy walks and he, he gained the, the eyes for the boy with the legs and they were able to go free. You know, they, through helping each other, they were able to see their way out of the forest um, because they had this opportunity to help each other in reacting instead of reacting to each other in a way that was, wasn't helpful, the thought was of helping each other. Now, why am I telling that story when we're talking about thinking? Because if you look through that chat, you'll see multiple times that be willing to serve, have courage, be kind, right? That all of these things are, are these thoughts are also ways of being that will help us to elevate. So when we think about the views of the mind, right? There's, there's three particular views of the mind that is talked about in this chapter, and, and it's from the different levels of elevation. So from a primitive being, right, the mind is hidden under the jaws of animal instincts. And so if we think about, you know, the, like the cost of, of negative thoughts, right, um, because negative thoughts actually produce like a fluidic toxicity. Um, again, um, in Nasolar, there was that story of um, Lysias's mother, Laura, um, her granddaughter, I cannot remember her name, but her granddaughter um, who was uh, at the dinner table or it was over for dinner. And Andre Louise was saying, why is she sitting at a different table? And we're all sitting at this table. And you, those of you who are familiar with the story will recall that, you know, um, Ms. Laura said, because, you know, she has a high level of anxiety and the level of anxiety that she has is producing toxic fluids that will actually poison our food. And like, that's something really to think about, right? Is, is, is that if the level of our thoughts have the capacity to poison, you know, our, our sustenance and in muscle law, right? It's, it's not actually solid food, right? This is energy that, 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 that is being taken in, but it's something to think about. And, and then because thoughts also have this capacity to produce not just poison, but also disease, you know, the, the spirit Miramez, you know, said that we, you know, got to look for the causes of disease and sources that are within us. And, and the spirit explains that, you know, the evil thoughts themselves are a waste that by law should stay with those whom produced it, right? So that is one of the ways we end up turning sickness on ourselves. So what if instead of doing that, we do just like we're doing in the chat. We share good thoughts with each other, like treating others as we would like others to treat us. How about that being the absolute golden rule? Right. And and thinking about that. Right. And and Angiata, it sounds to me like how you responded to that coworker is how you would have wanted to be treated. You would have wanted right them to to think the way that you did. Like maybe that's just how Angiata shows love. Maybe that's just how that's how she loves. Right. Instead of saying, I don't like the way that she's loving me. I don't really like that. Right. And if we think about in the human soul, right? So that, that those are some examples of just like how the how negative thoughts can can um, from the, the from the positive level. There's also one other thing I wanted to, I was thinking about about this is um, the undisciplined thoughts, right? We've got negative thoughts, we've got anxiety, we've got evil thoughts, and then there's just undisciplined thoughts, right? There was um, a story also in Nasolar where where a a brother that was in one of the um, in one of the hospitals was doing really well, and then he started doing really bad, and so Andre says, you know, what happened to him? And, and the, um, the instructor, I don't remember if it was Narciso or Lysias, but told him, well, his relatives back on earth have been, um, have been sending him negative thoughts because they're still angry with him. And he received their thoughts and became worse. So this brings a lot for us, right? Our thoughts don't just impact our world. They're not just the mirror of our life but they also impact the world around us and have the capacity to help or harm others. So this brings a lot for us, especially as we think about, you know, being ready to serve, right? Treating others as we want to be treated. And I love going back to what Marcia said earlier, right? Having courage, because sometimes, you know, it takes bravery to actually produce the positive thought and to produce the positive action. And then we think about, you know, the spirits and spirits who have perfected themselves. It becomes like a brilliant diamond reflecting the divine glory, right? And the, 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 the spirits' messages are full. Like, you know, all of Andre Louise's books, the gospel, um, the, the, um, the, the, the five books of the, the, spiritist, um, the, the, the spiritist doctrine, 
are full of stories and examples of, for example, elevated spirits praying and, um, and the, the prayers creating light and flowers from doing all sorts of um, um, beautiful things just with the, the mentalization of light and the mentalization of positive thoughts, just like what was produced in this chat. Now imagine if I asked you all to give me 10 complaints and we had filled the chat with that, it would be a very different vibration than what we are creating here together, my friends. And this is what we are doing together, all of us together and all the spiritual friends that are helping us that are enjoying being harmonized in this energy of, of positive thought that this is bringing all of us a little bit closer to that reflection of divine glory because that of course is the purpose. And so when we think about the mind being the mirror of life, what Emmanuel is asking us to think about is that if we recognize the heart as the reflection, if we think about the mirror of life, the heart is a reflection and the brain as the center of its undulations or like its currents, because when you look into a mirror, you know, you can see that there's movement, right? And that these movements are generating the force of thought that can do many things. The force of thought can move. This force of thought can create, can transform, destroy, and rebuild in order to achieve refinement and sublimation. And I actually had to look up like what sublimation means. And, um, and it really means that to divert or to modify or transform like an instinctive impulse into a higher realm, right? So this is like of, of elevation. And so when we think about this, you know, this, this idea of the force of thought generating form, you know, and um, we know that thoughts create forms, right? Um, in universe and life, it talks about that thought forms are, are alive, right? That, that actually thought forms can be something that are alive around us. Um, we know from Nasolar and from Violets on the Window that thoughts, um, then the spirits in the spiritual realm create their clothing and their hairstyles and all sorts of things just with thought, right? Um, also in Asolar, I recall that, um, I think, I forget the chapter number, but it was when the colony was preparing for war and the governor had given the warning to the, um, to the colony about making sure that the thoughts were elevated. And then, you know, there was a picture shown of the, the earth's crust and how many dark thought forms were there because of all of the, the, um, the thoughts that are necessary to produce a war, right? Had actually created thought forms. And out of all that darkness, this powerful, bright light beamed so brightly and intensely they could see it in Nasolar. And when Andre asked what this is, it turns out that in this one little church, in this one little area of someplace in Europe that was being bombed and everyone was fighting, that they were singing and praying. And the, the mentor said, all the workers, let's go down to this church and help them. We're going to stay with them until they are done so that we can sing and, and pray and with them to magnify their work, right? And this is powerful, right? So we have to know that no matter how dark things are around us, that when we do what we're doing right now, just putting positive thoughts into a chat message on a technology platform, that we're thinking in our mind, what are more good thoughts I can put into this chat? What are good thoughts I can think of, right? What I want to think about, you know, the golden rule and treating people the way they want to be treated. I want to think about friends, family, and God and a sense of belonging. I want to think about hope and patience and fraternity and service and faith and finding godness and courage and peace on earth. We are generating light, my friends, when we do this. Yes, we are. This is a beautiful thing, right? We can do this. Or we could do something else. That's not that. But the beautiful thing is we get to choose, right? And that is the, the most important thing. So when we choose to generate this force of our thoughts, what are we going to do? What are we going to move? Are we going to move mud, right? Or are we going to move resistance out of the way, right? What are we going to create? Are we going to create love and peace on earth, right? Or are we going to create something else? What are we going to transform? right? What are we going to destroy? Are we going to destroy the good? Or are we going to destroy the old man, the old woman inside of us so that the new man, the new woman can be reborn so that we can achieve refinement and sublimation? No, this is up to us. These are all opportunities that we can choose to say yes or choose to say not today. But the choice is ours. And given that we are imperfect, uh, imperfect spirits, right? That this... <clears throat> There's this mutual interchange 
right? That vibrates throughout every realm of the universe. This is the influx and the outflux of thoughts. Everything is in a state of flux or movement and under renewal, under the principles of interdependence and repercussion. Now, this idea of interdependence, I love, you know, Thich Nhat Hanh is one of my favorite authors. And he once talked about how when you're drinking a cup of tea, you're drinking clouds. And I did not understand what he meant. So I had to go back and read what he was saying. And he said, well, if you're drinking a cup of tea, you're drinking uh, steeped tea leaves. So those tea leaves had to grow in soil. And, and those tea leaves, that tea plant needed sunshine and rain and clouds and, and wind and oxygen and you know all of the things that it needed. There was interdependent, there were dependencies, interdependencies. And then the, the the oxygen needed that plant in order to produce and convert carbon to, to oxygen, right? There's all of these interdependencies that we have. So there's this inherent oneness in all of us that we forget so many times in how poorly that we treat this earth. But his point was, when you drink that cup of tea, you're drinking not just clouds, but you're drinking sunshine. You're drinking rain. You're drinking the soil, right? You're drinking the wind, Right. But most of us, we just slurp the tea and just keep moving. Right. Without even having that moment to, like Bill said, right, finding godness. Right. Because that's all of those things are we, we don't we don't create sun. We don't create. Right. The, the, the wind. These are these are part of the elements of this beautiful planet from our heavenly father. Right. So what if we just took a moment to think about. Right. Even just as simple as having a cup of tea, the interdependence. Right. Of, of all things in nature and all and our life here on earth and the repercussions of when we don't do that, which right now we're experiencing um, in terms of climate change and also the, the poor condition of this physical planet based on how humans have treated this earth. Not how the earth has treated us, but how humans have treated this earth. And so the, our mental reflexes set the stage for the reaction of emotions, right? So Again, these mental reflexes are, are like our habitual responses, right? It's, you know, we think and then we feel. And we have to think about what do we have to think to create good feelings, right? We've got some wonderful things in the chat. I hope that you still keep bringing them coming because I don't know about you, but as I read these things that are in the chat, it makes me have an emotional reaction. When I think about, you know, building peace in the world, that makes me feel good because the fact that we don't have it makes me sad. So the th thought of peace on earth makes me feel really happy. You know, the thought of service, like Karen and Natalia said, right, that, that um, you know, if everyone has the spirit of service, then, then suffering is pretty much over, at least the, the kinds of suffering that is due to selfishness, right? And, and, and when we have faith, you know, we, we know that we can make our way through the suffering, then we may not eliminate suffering, but we can manage the duration and the intensity of that suffering, Right. And I love this praying and vibrating for the planet, right? These are, these are things that, that we can hold in our mind that help to elevate our own consciousness because these emotions create ideas, right? And then the ideas determine what attitude we're going to take and then the words that commit our action. So for example, if we take the time to evaluate our thoughts, and if we think, you know, right to left, if we, if we think analytically about our thoughts, not just thinking randomly, Okay, or undisciplinedly, but thinking left to right in an analytical fashion. For example, if I think this, how will I feel? If I feel this, how will I act? And if I do this, what will be the result? If we take the situation earlier from, from Angiata, right? If um, this person has done something that I'm not sure that I understand or like, if I think this, how will I feel? Angiata didn't want to feel that, right? She wanted to feel good. So she said, well, if I feel, you know, if I feel that, how will I act? She didn't want to, didn't want to do that because she didn't want the result, right? If we make the decision that says, okay, I would much rather think, hey, maybe this person doesn't know how to love. And if I think that, then I'm going to feel, oh, I feel compassion because they want to love, but they're just doing it unskillfully, right? And if I, if I decide to, based on me thinking that they're just loving unskillfully, just to just show them love anyway, what will be the result? We don't often take the time to do this, to think all the way left to right. If I think, let's take the opposite, right? If I think I'm going to be, this person has done something, I'm annoyed. So I'm thinking annoyance, I'm thinking judgment. 
Now, as I'm thinking annoyance and judgment, how am I feeling? I'm not feeling good. I'm feeling annoyed. Now maybe my heart rate goes up a little bit and I have to repeat that thought a little bit in order to feel really satisfied judging that person, right? To really replay that. And then if I, how am I going to act based on that? Probably not very nice. Uh, or at the very, at the very least, maybe just I'll withhold love, right? I may not act overtly mean, but I'll withhold love. And if I withhold love, how am I going to feel? And if I take that further, right, left to right, what does this mean for me spiritually? Is this going to make me evolve or is this going to make me stay stuck? Because it won't take me backwards, right? I'm either going to evolve, I'm going to stay stuck, or worse yet, I'll stay stuck and cause spiritual harm or incur more debt, right? Yeah, if we think left to right, this will help us, you know, during this path of, you know, right, the, the path of moving from um, imperfect spirits up the elevation chain and through this thought of moving our way from primitive to human to transforming the, the level of our soul. And what do we need to think to produce good feelings, good emotions that create good ideas that would determine our attitudes and words that commit our actions? What if we took the time to think about everything that we have in this chat today. What if we thought about being patient? The next time we have an opportunity to react, we chose patience. If we're patient, how will we feel? If we, if we feel the love that is required to feel patient, how will we act? Well, we'll act in a way that is, is, is tolerant and merciful, right? And if we act in a way that's tolerant and merciful, like what will be the result? Will we grow spiritually? Most assuredly, right? Will we stay stuck? Probably not. Right. If we weren't patient, we may not be able to answer that in the positive. So this idea of thinking left to right, thinking analytically about how we think is important for us because this will take us through this process of our the state of flux that we're always in, the state of renewal. So our reflexes set the stage for our emotions, how we think is going to choose how we feel, how we feel will choose our ideas that will control our attitudes and the words that create our actions. Um, Marcia, did you want to say something? Yes, can I just add a, a comment and I thought about this amazing the um, thought that you're talking. Uh, it made me reflect that it's all about our ego and how we want to control things and how we want to judge others based on our perception. So now on what I try to do is when I look at a situation, I think I look and say, I have nothing to add and nothing to remove. Because if I want to add something to the situation, remove is just me trying to control it and put my judgment on top of it. So when you start thinking, I have nothing to add, nothing to remove, just look from the outside, then you can start like thinking the way you're saying from left to right and not being impacted by it. Mm -hmm. So say that again. You said you have nothing to add. Can you say that last part again? You have nothing to add and nothing to... to say nothing that to remove. Nothing to add. No, nothing to remove from the situation. Because the moment you want to add something and change or remove from it because you don't agree with it, then you're already you know, using your perception and your judgment to that situation or to that person or whatever is happening. So when you look at the situation and I'm not going to add anything, not to remove, just look from the other side and this is what it is then you take yourself out of it and not, you know, don't get impacted and can think it through. That's the way I see it sometimes. I love that. I have nothing to add and nothing to remove. Because the minute we do that, right, I love that it, it now I'm now we're not doing that kind of snide, oh, you know, but bless, you know, bless bless their heart, right? <laughs> if they were like me, they would do it like this. <laughs> yeah, because we always say, oh, look at this. Why they don't do that? Oh, I wouldn't do that so like you're adding your perception and removing you know but you don't know what the other person is thinking like like when the other said maybe the other person is not even thinking like the way you're thinking they're just the way it is and they're not nothing nothing bad we are making look bad in our perception mm -hmm. and so and so when you tell yourself i have nothing to add and nothing to remove how do you feel at the end of that you feel good when you do that right yeah, because then it doesn't affect me. And then the, the moment that you feel want to control the situation or that feeling, the bad feeling that's going to come to you, it kind of goes away. So it's like you look from, from the top and from outside, say, okay, that's it. Nothing, I can add anything. I, it's just acceptance, the situation as it is at the end. 
Love that. Love that. Thank you. Um, Andriata, it's because I see your hand raised too. Did you want to say something? Yeah, it's related to what Marcia was saying, but also to what you were saying in the beginning when you were talking about the tea. Um, I was reading an article this week that was saying, you know, that although technology is amazing because it allows us to all be here right now, technology is also contributing to make us feel more anxious because we are being bombarded with so many information and it's like, you are working, the TV is on, and your phone is ringing and everything. So I'm not sure, you know, if you feel the same, but like while talking to my coworkers and my friends, sometimes it's just like this feeling of feeling overwhelmed. And I do think that if, if we want to progress, if, you know, we are talking about all these good feelings that we want to develop, and, you know, uh, how we want to be able to look inside and identify our patterns. But to be able to do that, the starting point is at least to make your mind a little bit more silent. And, you know, maybe meditation is something that I have been trying. But again, it depends. Some, some days are hard. Some days, you know, it's just like, it's overwhelming the amount of information and things around us. So I was just going to throw this thought out there that, you know, um, we should all, always start with the baby steps. And probably the first step would be uh, trying to calm your mind, your thoughts. Mm -hmm. I love that because the point you're making that I'm hearing, Andreata, is that how are we going to think left to right about this process of what's my thought? How am I going to feel? What idea will this create? What attitude will this produce? What will I say to myself? What will I do? Then how will I feel? And then how will my spiritual growth be impacted? It's hard to take un undertake that left to right analytical process while the TV's going, while we're looking at our phone and while someone is saying something to us, right? <laughs> so I, I would agree that we would need to create space for this. But here's the beautiful thing is that people are not really, um, we are not always aware that we do not need to respond instantly to everything. Like really it's okay to not respond right away to something. Because in fact, silence and lack of action is a reversible decision, right? That is a reversible decision. So this is something, you know, for, for us to, to, to think about. Um, thank you so much, Angiata. So we just have a couple more slides left. Um, there's, again, this is a short chapter, but there's just so much here. You know, there's so much here. Oh, I love this. Not only create space for critical thinking, but every information that comes through carries its own energy. Yes, so true, Karen, because actually that's, I mean, this is like almost what it says in the slide, right? That, you know, that, that from these manifestations, right? From, the, from this energy that comes through, right? That, that, the, that the information that we think, but it also, from these manifestations, these threads emerge, you know, these threads emerge that, that generate the causes from which circumstances are born. Thus, you know, that bring destruction, you know, or liberation to our lives, right? And, um, and you know, from the book, The Domains of Mediumship, one of the mentors was teaching something, and I, and I actually, um, I pulled this quote because I thought it was so interesting. He said that our mind is a nucleus of intelligent forces that are generating a subtle plasma that upon exteriorizing, right, incessantly away from us in a continuous manner, that they offer objective resources to the images of our own imagination under the command of our own designs, right? And that from the conjunction of our ideas, our own personal existence results. So if we think about this, we go back left to right, right? It starts with something happens. And I'm, uh, the, the thought of, um, not the thought, the quote of Viktor Frankl, who was a Holocaust survivor. Those of you that have Saturday classes with me know I talk about this quote all the time because it's so powerful to me. But he says, between stimulus and response, there's a space. And in that space lies your freedom to choose. And what you choose determines your freedom, determines whether you're bringing destruction or liberation to your life. So there's the stimulus and then there's the response. Now in that response, that space, that's where, that's where we um, make the decision on what am I going to feel? What am I going to think? What am I going to feel? 
based on how I feel, what am I going to do? Based on what I'm going to do, um, what result do I think I'm going to get? And then based on the result I think I'm going to get, um, is that the result that I want? And whether I want this result or not, is it going to elevate me spiritually? Is it going to keep me stuck spiritually? Am I going to cause harm to the people around me? Or am I going to incur more spiritual debt? Because we won't go backwards, right? T all that happens in that space. As Andriana says, that space needs to be somewhat quiet for us to be able to, to process. But the result of that is what produces, right, our life. That's the, the, our thoughts are the mirror of our life. That's the chain that happens, right? From our internally. Now, externally, now we're talking about, you can see this from this image, right? The threads that go out, that act on the fluids, that this plasma that uh, interacts with the fluids and begins to produce and attract, you know, spiritual friends um, of all different vibrations, depending on where we're at, right? In that, in that space that, um, that collaborate together to produce the circumstances of our lives. So thought is the mirror of our life. So what on earth are we going to do with all of this mental power, right? Um, oh, it looks like we got another good one. Look at this. Do not judge thought or action that's happening around you. Just contribute good. Yes. Let everything bring learning and experience. Yes. Right. So when we do that, right, that's if we do that, let's think left or right on that. If we do that, how are we going to feel? We're going to feel good, right? If we're not judging, is this going to produce spiritual growth? Yes. Will this incur spiritual debt? No, right? Will this keep us stuck? No, right? So this, this, if we take the time to evaluate our thoughts, that's the whole point of me asking you to put your thoughts here in this so we can think through left to right, right? Oh, looks like we have a friend from, from Colombia. Hola, hello friend, welcome, welcome. So what are we gonna do with all this mental power? Oh, somebody saying something. Sí, hola, buenas noches. Oh, buenas noches. Welcome, welcome. A todos, buenas noches. Gracias por la invitación. Yeah. Eh, disculpa, es muy interesante lo que mencionas. Eh, soy Fabián, desde Colombia. Un abrazo y qué bueno saludarlos a todos. Estoy muy atento. Gracias. Gracias, Fabián. Yay, welcome. Okay. He's very happy to be here. Gracias. Very happy, yeah, very happy that you are here. Gracias. Okay, so this brings us to, you know, this um, last couple of slides here, right? So, so evolution, right, means that we have choices, right? Because no one can transcend the resources of their own mind beyond the level of progress that we've already attained. You know, we can't, and we can't do this by mere improvisation, right? However, we are all affected by each other's mental reflexes according to our capacity of assimilation. So, all of these positive thoughts in this chat, all of the beautiful fraternal conversation that we've had, the beautiful opening prayer that Angiata said for us, right? All of the teachings from Emmanuel that we've heard, right? Our capacity to absorb this, right? The, our capacity of assimilation is, is de determined by our willingness right, to, to absorb, right, that, so, and it's also this collective activity that we're engaging in, um, none of us are immune to it, right, so even if there's one of us that's just really persistent about thinking negative, you've just been bombarded with 35 positive thoughts in this chat and seven slides of, of positive energy, so you will not be immune from this good energy. Likewise, um, there's, um, <coughs> likewise, um, if, if there's only one of us that's producing positive thoughts and the rest of us, the chat's filled with negative thoughts, then, then, then none of us are immune from it. It makes it harder for the one person that's producing positive thoughts to hold that area of, of high energy. Andre Luis talks about this when they, when they went to do, um, rescue missions on the umbral, on the crust of the earth, how, how difficult it was, but they were able to do it. It just required a higher level of prayer, a higher level of intention. It required drawing nutrients from the air and from the forest and taking time to absorb positive energies. So the point here that while we cannot be immune um, and we cannot transcend the resources of our own mind beyond the resources, the, the progress that we've already obtained, we can still choose. We can still take ourselves left to right through our thought processes and make the choice, even if the stimulus is a negative thought. We still have that space between stimulus and response 
to think right to left on. If I think this, how will I feel? If I feel this, what will I do? If I do this, how ultimately is my spiritual growth impacted? Right, so we are just about near the end here. Um, I think we just have one more slide after this, um, and then we'll we'll do the passes. Um, so if you haven't done so already, um, try and grab some water so you have that ready. And um, to before I turn it over to Angiata, but um, this this last message, right, says you know we live and breathe, immersed in the world of images we project and receive, right? And so if remember that earlier message, right? Those who insist on measuring the mud end up getting covered in it. Well, what kind of world is that person living in? It's probably muddy, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, and it, this is, and Manuel is telling us that through such images, we either remain stationary, because remember, we don't go backwards, but we either remain stationary under the fascination. This is, so pay attention. We remain stationary under the fascination of elements that temporarily enslave us, or, right, either or, this or that, make a choice, or, we can absorb the regenerating ideas that promote our purification and progress. This chat is full of regenerating ideas. Every single thing that I have read here, I'm just gonna just gonna highlight again some of the things that you all mentioned, right? Starting at the top, right? Understanding, charity, music, love, serenity, kindness, breathing, praying, thinking about family and loved ones, gratitude, Jesus, love, you know, God is present everywhere, patience, peace on earth, courage, finding Godness, service, faith, hope, patience, fraternity, God, sense of belonging, be ready to serve, throw light on bad thoughts, golden rule, pray, vibrate for the planet, right? All of these things, these are regenerating ideas promoting our purification and progress because this principle of mental reflex is at the core of our life. We all affect each other in creation that in turn is a reflection of the objectives of the creator. So when we are taking the time to just, you know, this technology, yes, it can be annoying, but look what a beautiful service that it just provided us in its capacity to help us share these positive thoughts together. So the last thing I wanted to say before we close is the, the chapter in Nasolar that talks about Christmas, right? It, um, there's a, this field of flowers and the governor said that they, they save the most beautiful flowers so they change them every month in this field of flowers. But he said that they, they save the most beautiful flowers for Christmas time on earth, which is when the most beautiful thoughts are sent from, from earth up to you know, the colony and up to the heavens. And so this brings to us something, right? You know, what about our thoughts and prayers? Can we send these beautiful thoughts and prayers in other months, right? Could we also send these prayers of hope and service to our, our guardian angels and the good spirits who work on earth? Could we engage in regenerating ideas and thoughts that promote our purification and progress more often than just in, in, in December or just on Tuesday nights? or maybe just on Saturdays, or maybe more often than just from a ritualistic, habitual frame of mind, but from an intentional left to right analytical process to really use our powers of reason. This is when we use our intelligence for good, right? Is to properly analyze the best way to think in a way that will promote our elevation, which is the whole purpose of our presence here in this physical body, in this dense vibration, is for us to spiritualize ourselves. So our last slide is just a short message from the gospel, and then we'll have our passes. So from chapter 17, it says, for those who gather together under the eye of the Lord, imploring the assistance of the good spirits, purify your hearts. Do not allow yourselves to be perturbed by futile and mundane thoughts. Lift up your spirits towards those you are calling so that they, having encountered favorable dispositions, may launch a profusion of seeds which should germinate in your hearts so as to produce the fruits of charity and justice. And so this is from the Spirit Bordeaux. Thank you so much, all of you, for listening. I want to see if there are any more 
uh, thoughts, any positive thoughts more that, that have been added into the chat, or if anybody has it, it looks like we have one more. Oh, beautiful talk, Karen. Thank you. Um, any other positive thoughts that anyone wants to add um, that we could be thinking about, or if there's any questions before I turn it over to Angiata? Kara, just wanted to say thank you. You were amazing tonight. Uh, I really needed to hear all of this. So thank you very much. Thank you. I give praise to all the spiritual friends that are helping us because we have, there's a lot of help here tonight. I had a lot of help with us here tonight. Thank you so much. And we give thanks to God for everything. All righty. Um, yay. Thank you so much, everyone. All right, so I will, um, it's now time for the passes. So thank you so much for taking time to, to be with us tonight and for, um, for, for talking about good thoughts, for holding good thoughts. Please keep thinking about what good thoughts that you can place into this collective mental vessel that we have created that are our collective intentions to grow together. Thank you so much, everyone. And it's now time for the passes. Angiata. Thank you, Karen. So with this beautiful talk and all these good feelings that this talk is bringing to us, let's close our eyes and elevate our thoughts in preparation for the passes. Let's elevate our thoughts, thinking of Jesus, imagining Jesus right in front of us. He is smiling and inviting us to put in our hands, in his hands, all the tiredness, all the, the, the mental stress and, and the feelings, the negative feelings that we have, so we can be clean and prepared to start the passes. In the same moment, we ask God to send our spiritual friends our guardian angel by our side so they can be with us throughout this passive practice. At this moment, let's imagine a crystal clear water falling over us. This water is involving our whole body and it's washing away all the negative feelings, the negative thoughts, also is washing away all the, the physical illness from our body. And it's helping us to purify, to energize and clean our chakras, our centers of force. Let's imagine that this water is really involving us, making us feel light and clean and removing all the illness, the negative energy, the anxiety, and also the excess of information from our minds. This water is also cleaning not only us, but also the place in which we live. It's cleaning our houses, the environment in which we work as well, making these places clean and light, removing all the bad energies, all the heavy feelings and sentiments from these places, leaving these places and also us clean and light. In this moment in which we are feeling spiritually and physically clean, we will start the next phase. And in this phase, we are imagining this beautiful light above our heads. This light is energizing us, filling us with good sensations, vibrations. This light is energizing our centers of force. It's bringing light to the parts of our body in which we need cure. It's bringing light to our soul helping us to feel happy, to feel loved. And in the same way, this light is also being bright and energizing our houses, energizing those who live with us, 
our family members, our co-workers, helping them also to feel light, to feel the love of God, and to feel energized. In this moment, we also send this light to all those who are suffering, who are facing diseases, the workers in the hospitals, in the families who have people sick or who are mourning right now. We ask the team of good spirits to energize the water that we have in our table. Energizing this water so this water can help us to bring us good health and good energies to our physical body. Thank you. So to end tonight's study, we are first thankful to God for the opportunity of being here. Thankful to Kara and to the good spirits who are helping her during this talk and also keeping all of us energized. We in this moment, we ask our good guardian angels, we ask them and at the same time, we give them permission to help us during this week, to help us to really put in practice everything that we've heard tonight, to be of service, to practice good thoughts, to be charitable, to be kind, and to really work inside of ourselves, to really think on how we want to progress, on how we can improve ourselves little by little. We also ask that all these spiritual friends that are with us tonight can see the light and can be helped. Let's all go in peace. Let's all be kind and bring the love of God and Jesus to all the ones that we touch and that we interact this week. Thank you and so be it.